Hey, what's up, guys? David here. Hope everyone had a good weekend. I had a great conversation with Thon Nguyen, otherwise known as Mr. Remworks on Instagram, and he's one of my oldest and my best friends from the menswear and the shoe community. We had a great conversation, wide-ranging everything from what the best value in the classic menswear industry is, what influenced his style in classic men's footwear, and what he's currently most interested in. And let's uh, let's jump right in. All right, let me. This is uh, as I said the for one thing, and this is more selfish for me, but um, like t-shirt, like just like casual, like summer stuff. So like t-shirts or like polo shirts like yeah. stuff that like i'll say is you would see at like you would see at j crew but stuff that's better than what you would see at j crew without spending a couple hundred dollars on like a shirt you know what i mean like, just so like is that where where would you uh recommend starting is that of course you know one brand i always recommend to you is Pierre mckay they make really cool stuff Good quality and very affordable, very, very affordable. Um, and you can look into, um, you know, order stuff on eBay, like vintage, but vintage is just more of a. Um, um, it's like a hit or, hit risk, or miss, you know? Yeah. So you can go into, yeah, like polo, polo and t-shirt. <laughs> yep. And what, um, I was just saying, just whether... I guess anybody that's like watching and me like what is it just hunt like um non no like synthetic material or like how do you so i um so i personally um if there's a little bit of synthetic it is okay for me because it it, it kind of kind of improve the longevity and durability of, of of the of the piece but like it's not you know just like 10 percent, 20 percent maybe but it's not like a hundred percent like polyester or like 95 percent polyester yeah and five percent con but then hundred percent like you know pure um organic natural fibers is you know it feels better on the skin it age better i was gonna say like i've noticed the um for like at least like trousers when like hundred percent like wool trousers, even if they have the uh with like some of them are like half lined or like yeah kind of like and like if that is a synthetic material, it like doesn't drape very well. But if it's a hundred percent like wool linen or whatever, like it drapes like a lot better. Yeah. And same thing like with shirts, like I've found like sometimes it just like kind of like uh it doesn't just like lay like fall. Or like yeah, kind of like just, poof, you know yeah so like i mean is this like is this uh is there any downside yeah. to 100 percent? so the downside of most um natural fibers like con linen wool you know you can go up to cashmere alpaca whatever is yeah. that they um they tend to shrink a little bit if you wash them in hot and then have them dry in the dryer so they're just the like that's a shrinkage you, yeah so you don't have to like like baby them but there's more like there's like, a you have to like think about it care, you, you know, have to like think about it as care. opposed to just like throwing it in the washer every time yeah. you wear it and then just in the dryer you just have to actually like similar to i guess like dress socks or whatever if you just like throw them in like they're just gonna eventually like pull apart at the yeah. at the that's joints the whole point. Right. So because because, you know, because we we go toward these higher quality um, uh, garments that is made of natural fibers because you want the good feeling on the skin and good performance and um, and the, uh, you know, the, the 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 patina over time, you know. Right. Yeah. But it, you know in turn of that for in return of that you have to take care of them slightly different than your you know regular uh 100 polyester um sport sporting goods right yeah and that, that's what so like i have like yours like oh who's that guy i don't know some like sharp looking dude that <laughs> sometimes thinks he's funny but 
um yeah like i mean i was just trying to look like so like this looks like comfortable and i mean all of it like looks comfortable but i'm saying like this isn't something like i i would necessarily like see myself like Mm -hmm. wearing unless like there was a specific occasion for it so that's what i was just trying to like see that like stop right there see that uh yep that you know right there that's a sweater that's a vintage sweater made of super you know super old school stuff and the shirts is also so you know vintage the ties vintage everything's vintage um uh only the trousers are new but you know it's very comfortable very warm and the sweater maybe has been around for 30 40 years and and it's still going just fine and like would you uh so for i guess for vintage like do you uh, um get it locally or like um, eBay? yes yes and, yes and yes and no yes. because i do visit local vintage thrift store from time to time uh, um other time i'll just go on ebay and because i know my body measurement and yeah. sizing really well so i just look for that specific sizing and you can stop right there the center yep right there anybody can wear that right yeah just a shirt as a sweater and a pair of uh trousers you can swap them out for a pair of jeans and it will work it, it work equally as well yeah and so like i guess like that's my so like i've been like really happy with everything i've gotten from like spare mckay i think mm -hmm. the uh, the only reason i've never really like tried to the ebay route is because i'm like with the shoe like i can look at the shoe and know uh, is this something i can either um restore myself or is it does, is it not even like need it with mm -hmm. clothing and is it like a, is it quality clothing I, I couldn't answer like any of those questions so for clothing for vintage clothing on ebay especially is that first you gotta look for um i personally for vintage clothing i always 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 look for 100 percent um natural fibers like 100 percent wool 100 percent cotton i try to stay away from from the uh, mixed fibers because you know like back in the 80s and 90s there's a there used to be a wave of you know mixed fibers and you know high new fast fashion that's the, yeah that's not really high quality and vintage clothing always parachute that pants. Kind of yeah right so first off is like for vintage stuff i always look for 100 percent um natural fibers second is that I, I look for the measurement you know if there's no measurement i you know if i like it enough i'll ask for it if i don't like it i'll be like mm, i'll go from somewhere else because mm. measurement is everything right so i so i guess like that's the the other part of it is if you found something if you found like a nice like vintage so not for you but for somebody i guess like me that couldn't make that make that call like mm -hmm. would you uh, um well, let's just use the last uh yeah so like it would you like uh is there a better option of like trying to take a risk on something like this on ebay or just going here and buying like a contemporary yeah, so, version of it for a similar so the price good thing with 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 um with with newer stuff is that there's a return policy you know right return exchange policy return and exchange yeah. policy you can just buy it if it doesn't fit well email them and have them you know just talk to them have them return ask them and you know hey can i return this it doesn't fit really well can i size up size down and most of the time these you know vendors and sellers they are very knowledgeable you know when it comes to um uh sizing yeah right be like hey you know i'm this tall um this heavy or light in weight um <laughs> or just, yeah, just talk about like, the yeah. correct um direction yeah so like is this so like these are like this is like a perfect example of like that like j crew like t-shirt that i was yeah. talking about um so like you and uh, yosel yas yosel yeah. right um yep Yoso. so like yoso <laughs> versus uh something like this which i think like um this this brand like you can find other places i think so but either way like t-shirts like this which i don't know what i have to 
change the currency there, but um, ready to wear Yosel versus like Spear McKay. Is there what? What do you? So, so the main reason, um, you know, beside the brand and the location of the brand is that the make of the the garment, right? The more um, handwork or the more expensive uh, the raw material is, the higher the price. Right. And also, like if it is made in, say, Sweden versus it is made in India or China, the cost of the make is way like it's like two, three times different, right? Yeah. So that would reflect onto the selling price of the vendor. There's no, there's no going around about that. But it's not really so. But in this day and age, I think if you find something you like and you try it and you like it, just go for it because origin is not really a factor anymore yeah right because craftsmanship and quality can come from anywhere right no and I, so i guess that's the so i would is the answer that i'm hearing basically like they're equally they're equally like uh good or like quality products it's really just like which which has like the either the style or the color yeah. or the if it has a style or the combination that or you're looking for features that you like yeah okay i think that makes sense the one thing that's yeah, really right. kind like, of like, like like spear mckay offered a polo shirt with a button out colors like that's not that's not often seen on the market i like this one yeah or, or yeah. like a shirt collar that's not often seen on the market. Most of what most white runs you see on the market is the elastic thing that's attached onto the collar, not buttoned down or not shirt collar. Yeah, and I said, like, this just seems like cheap. Yeah, exactly. Like that's amazing how they can make it like that. So, uh, but uh, so, cause I mean like that's even, I think I don't, I haven't, I'll have to like look around to find it on here, but um I mean, I have one polo from from Yosel, and I really, mm-hmm. I really like it. But they're, I mean, they're on sale now. But even, uh, I mean, whatever it is, like, it's not thirty bucks. So, yeah. like, is the so, uh, is the value like? Would you get that much higher value with yeah, the one right. from Yosel? So, so like, let's, let's rewind a little bit. So it comes back to whatever you value, like your so polos that they put um, like their swallow neck or whatever, a collar that see, see the collar is more substantial because they hand cut and hand attached it in their workshop. So it takes more time and more skill to make versus the other, um, the counterpart that's buttoned down or or spread collar is literally, you know, you take a pattern and you stamp it out, you know, quickly on the machine. Right. And like, can go through the machine. It, like this is the well, like the equivalent of like Yosel's shoes and uh, Spear McKay is like the, uh, not in a bad way, but just like a like a factory. Yeah, like like like, like the, the the amount of time and skill you have to put into making it reflect on the price. It's not right. necessary for like uh, somebody that's like, hey, I want the cheapest piece that served me. Well, okay, you know, Spear McKay is always there. But then I want something that's really tailored, really well-made, really show it, you know, show an old school charm, tailored yeah. clothing. And you also can make it like, you know, their stuff is always like that. Yeah, I think so. Like personally, the my hesitation with with uh, your soul has always been that, like, with uh, it's still gonna go back to shoes again. But it took me a while to figure out like what it is that I liked, style, uh, yeah. material, and like I'm not I don't know that yet. So like I don't want to spend uh, like I'd rather take the value here at like thirty bucks or forty five bucks. Absolutely, and experience like you know twice as many styles than. Uh, yeah only be able to experience one and then not really like love it and uh, not know if it was the style or if it was the material or something else because i didn't try like i couldn't try like the other one yeah like that that's nothing wrong with that i personally own like five seven polos from smear mckay and like three polos from yoso and and i love all of them like equally they just they're just different right yeah. whatever the offer is different 
Yeah, no, that's uh, so see if there's any other pieces here that uh, is this from Yosel? I'm just uh, that's from me, that's from the Pacific Northwest. You are like a I was gonna say a renaissance man, but I think that uh, that's in the name, right? Yeah, exactly. That's a that's a one of the guy that we know. We you know we used to be friends with and uh, named me like that, so I, I took the name. <laughs> oh man, he always he pops up from time to time. Um, hey. But yeah, I was just the uh, so let me uh, see here. So um, I think I, like is a great uh, maybe a good place to start or stop with the clothing. The beginner clothing like the entry because i think like that yeah kind of gives gives like at least me what i was looking for because i need some more uh i need like you know just warmer weather clothes and actually like yeah. i love the the linen trousers and like linen chinos that i got last year i think yeah. i just like warm the other day um See? and uh, they uh they're just like so so comfortable um, yeah absolutely and it's just, like, like, easy... that's the whole point of it for, first you know clothes needs to serve us right we yeah, need to the, feel comfortable in them first, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. See, see my comment. It was the top one. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. Is that wait? That's not them. Hold on. Uh, the this is the the covert ones. The yeah, uh, it's a cover cloth. It's yeah, a cover the, cloth wait, from what, um Spear McKay. Yeah. So where's the uh? Did I not? Maybe I didn't share the other one. I didn't. But you didn't it was, share it. Uh, yeah. Mostly just jeans. I think I I think I had like sent it to you, but what it doesn't matter. It's it's the uh it's just like a khaki linen and it's yeah, just like I remember that. It has like it has I had like cuffs added to them and um yeah, it's just easy to to wear and it's like comfortable and it doesn't even though it has like the, the cuffs on them, like it doesn't look overly formal or casual. It's just like yeah, I don't know. I just, I felt it felt pretty like 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 Natural so awareness. so so let let me let me add a comment on the cuffs. It's not the whole point of a cuff is that first is um it adds weight to the trousers, so the trousers drape slightly yeah. better around the ankle. Second, it informalizes the trousers because trousers without cuff are often asso associated with the military, with the you know the more formal. Um, um, Black tie, white tie, and assembly. So yeah, huh? so cuff is great. That's why I always push you toward cuffs because I know your style. Yeah, I was just say I I like them too because I feel like it. Um, uh, you know, shorter people on the uh, shorter side there, like it just uh, like you not me. like breaks it up, but it you know it just kind of gives like a little bit of a um dimension to like the top to bottom like look. Whereas <laughs> if if it's just kind of like a, yeah, a straight it frame your body it frame yeah. your body better like yeah. it really frame your body it's better. like if you like wear like if your pants are like really really long or even like with jeans if you have like huge cuffs on them like it just like like really like squishes down your entire like look whereas yeah, if you yeah. like make it like a thinner cuff it oh yeah kind of like um makes you look not doesn't make you look taller it just doesn't make you look shorter i guess yeah like like with, with proper cuffs like it frames your body really well yeah yeah so the um let's say the the other so we we're talking about like clothes and i don't know, like do you have any any uh topics on uh i was gonna like talk about like either uh patina or some of these like um What's the uh, like up and comer like shoemakers like yeah Hephaestus Hephaestus yep yeah Hephaestus. somebody else says it a little differently and I get I'm too used yes, to like saying it that way Greek it's a Greek name so everybody has a different way to say it so. yeah but like so like up and coming like shoemakers like that and uh, um, the other one that does like the spade soles like you really ace of ace of spades yeah so like shoemakers like that um, and just like curious like where so like I guess Hephaestus and Ace of Spades is like two completely different yep. realms of like completely, completely. But like uh, stylistically, I feel mm -hmm. like they're they both like and even like Lee from Ichigo Ichi -E, still like they like to kind of like push the boundary and I feel like some of them always are pushing it 
Yeah. And then I think like like Thon from Hephaestus and Lee from Ichigo H A can they they prefer to, but you can also like kind of like tame it down if you can kind of articulate like what it is that you want. So yeah. I guess like what's you you always like kind of go towards the uh I always um, go to the extreme side, you know. Yeah. So like why? Because it's just the whole point of it is uh first, right? Because you go to them, first you want something from them, something different, right? First is a different. It has to be different. But then with the way I dress, you see how I dress is that I don't want some, I don't want to really, you know, I kind of um what's the word? Uh not blend into everything but more you know um what's the word uh, stand out or yeah kind of stand out kind of kind of crazy make it like a, a statement crazy like kind of express like what you're yep kind of expresses that hey you know i'm i'm not you know i am i am my you know i am me i'm not somebody else i'm not you know i'm not copying anybody's i'm just I, I just take the idea and i I'll I'll give my take on it. Yeah. Uh, but then how many people have already done that before I did, right? A lot, right? Somebody has already taken some idea and then so already put their thing in it into it. So I'll just push it another level up, like like those. See? So these <clears throat> I took the idea of these from a very, very, very old 1930s, 1940s. Um uh spectators like at, yeah and then i i looked at i'm like oh so i want to shoes that is like really me really stand out kind of crazy kind of have a twist on it but um it has to work year round it doesn't have like because spectators are usually associated with like more spring summer yeah so this colorway i be, i think it works year round right dark brown box cap on a sand away it just it just works and then i'll be like okay so a nice space all because it's a classic old design oh so like so like and i i completely agree like i think this one looks oh i, I mean i think they all look good i think this one is definitely like my favorite of mm. of the kind of i guess uh bunch that you have like in this in this style um mm. this one i think is like it looks this really cool. Really I think on the, I think on this the is boundary. Like, like it's really yeah. on the crazy side. Is this is this like um so like even the color like what is this uh inspired by like an old pattern but then just with like different like more bold colors or is like the yeah. whole thing So this was from a 1936 Sears Sears, right? Sears yeah. uh piece of commercial um the pattern the design was old that was that old but then um like i wanted something that is kind of formal but not really formal you, you know what i mean like it's like right in between but then a colorway that's you know that's not seen often and i thought about it like okay so everybody's been wearing gray and navy and gray and navy I'm like okay i'll use their own gray and navy and put something crazy on it yeah, like, I mean, I, so, like, that, the, I guess, like, the design itself isn't, I, it's, real. I guess the spade sole is the thing that kind of, like, catches me or, like, throws me off a little bit. Yeah, the spade sole is really, it was really popular back then, like. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Who's that? Is this, uh, um. That's a sketch of my photo I sent him. Yeah, but it's, I mean, is this, is this a sketch that, that you hit, that you did? Or that you had no, done? Oh. No, he did. Yeah, so it looks cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, he he has he has some really good ideas, and his 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 team of shoemakers do really good execution. See that? See? Yeah, I'm trying to find like the. Uh, I want to let me. Well, let me go back See that? to right the there, uh right there, bottom right to the right to the right there. Yeah, but that's what I was I was looking for the um. Like the original, uh, like an original oh. like, example of the. Oh, uh, it should be in my profile. I think. Um, 
uh, it's in a way down, like go back, back, back down, like to about last summer, like. I want to, yeah, I was going to say, I want to find going. the, uh, um, going, going. uh, this one, that, that ad. Mm, yeah, yeah, keep going. I know what exactly where you're talking about. Slow down, slow down, slow down a little. We'll have to, we'll get to this. Like, we, we we'll get to the, oh, is this, there we wait, go. Oh. which one is this? 1937, that exactly. See, three dollars and 25 cents <laughs> yeah, it was in so, 1937. But, but like Sears, so I guess like that's the difference is like Sears and all, like I guess um, Macy's, Lord and Taylor, like all the big box stores. I don't even know, is Lord and Taylor still? But either way, like it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> Lauren I mean, Taylor was it, way it, gone. Like at, at this time, it was you know they like were that, amazing. That's where they you got. High. Yeah, that's where they you got the high. the nicer stuff. So like, yeah, I mean, Goodyear welded construction. Like you can see, like it's, um, yeah, it's just not like weird, but it's just it doesn't. Um, I think those names like carry weight when you talk about like vintage stuff, yeah. like like Florsheim or. Like uh, that, yes. Was it like Dax? Is Dax another one, or did I make that Dax, up? Yeah, Dax, Florsheim, um, Stacy Adams, you know, all the old, you know, Ooh. up back then. These things, what are those? I, I don't even know. These oh. are the Montoni. Yeah, that's right. I'm all wearing right. them right now, actually. Are you? <laughs> it's kind of... See? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of uh, funny, like, that uh yeah of course my eye was like drawn to this i think actually i do all right so hold on do we uh nope which uh which post is it that has it is it these i this don't one? remember to be honest yeah. there we go boom yeah so like this one i think is like so like i think this was just like a like great job of like yeah like putting, like get, get, getting Bringing inspired that to life. by the old stuff, yeah. but putting that, you know, their modern contemporary touch into it. So, yeah. Man, I said, like, most, most, a few are 1150. <laughs> <laughs> a few, just a few. Yeah. So, like, what, um, and yeah, I mean, like, I, like, I guess for, for me, and I think like most people, uh, and I guess like the trend is always to. Uh, uh, kill well, it. you were you, we left not not we left, but Zoom kicked us out around the time that you were talking about how Jasper you oh, was yeah, you know, getting yeah. shoes or so, like, pattern yeah. from you hero. Yeah, so like not, and I, so I was gonna say how like you very. Um, what's the right like you're very like proud of like the inspiration and like the uh you know what inspired that that shoe where i think like today people kind of shy away from saying like i was inspired by like you know thon shoe or i was inspired by they like feel like they like shoes right yeah, they, they like feel like they like copied someone <clears throat> and they like feel like that's like not they shouldn't admit it they should try and like take credit for it as opposed to being like, I was really inspired by that so much so that I, again? what's that? Are you throwing shades? <laughs> no, like I'm, I'm <laughs> like, I guess what I'm saying is like for like when Jesper and I like um, mentioned it, like, I think like both of us very, uh, we're like transparent about like, I really like, liked how that shoe came out. So like, I wanted to base oh, yeah, mine like off of that. Whereas like others, too, I'm like, okay, so I like something, right? Like, but hey, I, I'm inspired from it. Like, I'll take I, that idea, yeah. I'll put my stuff into it. I don't think everyone's like that, though. I feel like, I feel like it's uh, there's, I feel like people would are, I don't know if they're em, not embarrassed, but I don't know if they just don't want to kind of give the other person credit and say like that yeah. inspired me, or if they want to on um, like the flip side of it, it's like I don't care about that person, but I want to give people like the perception that this was all my idea but yes i feel like so, there's nothing wrong with with people with just yeah. being like you know what like that inspired me to uh either want to get like the same exact thing or it inspired me to 
get something that was based off of that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that, hey, I was inspired by, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever. But I was just inspired from it. I can copy it. I can take the ideas and put something else of mine into it. Yeah. But I would I would always say that, hey, I'm inspired by this. Like it's just giving credits where credits do, right? Yeah, but that's what I mean. So like here's his, which is yeah. so it's like the same shoe, but it's different leather. It's like, you know, per, there's there's a lot of stuff that's different about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like there's there's nothing wrong. And he like um not willingly, but you know what I mean? Like he was just like completely upfront, like, hey, like I he his shoes um were the ones that we like based it off of. Yeah, there there we go. Those right there. Yeah. So and that that's perfectly fine. Cause like and then like on the flip side, like these, like yeah. I think as soon as the first time like I had pushed them, it was the same thing, like saying, like, hey, like hey, he like I saw his and they were the ones that like were like, I think like if I wanted to try a lazy man like acme would be the one that i would get it from because i like really liked how his came out so i don't think there's like anything wrong with it i just think not everyone is as like upfront about it like i feel like they are just kind of like i like came up with this it's like great idea and it's just like well you know i think like there it would it would serve like everyone better if you just kind of like were fine and confident enough in saying like this yeah. is like what inspired me to do it see that that's that's one of the reasons that i always push my limit or like push the boundaries of my commission because i would always say that hey i took the ideas and inspiration from this person or that store or that model but then i turn it into mine completely like like i would not be afraid to say it but a lot of people lo- always be like hey I am the originator of, of this style, which I'm proud of. Like, okay. <laughs> right. I mean, like, it's no one, inv- like, I would say no one invented a tassel loafer. Like, Lee and nor I, like, we did not invent the tassel loafer. We just took Reward. elements. Yeah. We took elements of every other one <laughs> that we've liked and made this one which yeah. uh which like which this, is absolutely stunning like i like love this amazing i like really do love this this uh tassel over and i think like one of the the things that um and you probably like, have uh experienced it or just like have understood this a lot longer than i have but like at first i was um i was like kind of uh ang- not anxious but like hey like you know i'm excited to like get like the shoe trees and like these are just saint crispin shoe trees but um (laughs) they actually fit really well you see that (laughs) there's nothing wrong with it yeah i saw those i mean like did you get those made (laughs) right but uh, it fits perfect but i get so like when talking with lee though like it's um like a very intentional decision to wait for the shoe trees like and that's um not uncommon like i've seen jesper mention similar things with like bespoke shoes like daniel weijin i think uh, as well and it's just like um you want the shoe tree to fit once the shoe is broken in you don't want yeah. it to fit perfectly when it's just like off the last because yes yeah, it's, it's the fresh it you know, don't want it to fit off the fresh yeah <laughs> that's wrong <laughs> no <laughs> but the fresh uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you, I, I know what you're saying, like fresh off the last, because then it fits perfectly then, but then once you wear it and it molds to your foot, that like perfectly lasted shoe tree isn't going to fit perfect at all. It's better to like wait until you had it mold to your foot and then yeah. they make the shoe tree to fit that, which like, I don't, I don't see like that. I think like that makes complete sense. And I, am aware that it's more common than i was previously aware of it but i don't know like um do people do most like bespoke shoemakers not do that because it always seems like when you get see like a pair of like yohi or hero or mecariello they're or like uh 
I'm going to butcher the name, Sorienso. Um, yeah, I mean, like I can't even say that. <laughs> but like, they're always delivered with the treats. So, so I, I, how do you say this? Like, there's, there's different take. People always have different take on everything and anything. Yeah. Right? Because most of the time, I think is that I would prefer to get the last shoe trees early, so I don't have to wait. I don't have to go through the hassle of you know right. waiting for it, reship it over and over. Which you know, which is what many and most shoemakers do, right? But then Daniel Wigan is he 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 likes to have everything broken in, broken yeah. in and ready before he makes the shoe tree. So. The, the shape of the shoe trees would follow the broken in shape, not the brand new shape. So there's nothing wrong with either side. It's just, I think, personal take of the maker on it. But, I mean, it's just, because uh, like Lee's, um, he's much more, when, on the, so I'm not going to say like skill-wise, Dan, but like he's, if you like look at like Meccariello, like Acme, Lee, but like I say, Lee bespoke Lee of uh, Ichigo Ichi. Um, <laughs> like he's much more on the spectrum of like the Daniel Weijin, like very small, very like that order. That you know, there may only be like ten orders that he has for that year. So like mm -hmm. that, he puts like everything into that order. Whereas, yep. um, you know, like Gassiano Garling, like Meccariello, they. Uh, are like fully handmade shoes that they're that they offer but you know they're serving a much larger clientele so like yep. the amount of like time and effort that would go into uh, doing um, the same thing doing like that Lee and doing Lee that yeah doing that shoe tree based on like having that person ship the shoe tree back like i guess it's more so like do they have the time and the yeah expense right. to do it but more so like would the client even would the client even want to do it? Yeah. Or go yeah. through that hassle, right? Yeah, I was gonna say it does seem um not like a hassle, but it's just like once you like have once I like have these, like I mean, I don't I'm I'm not like excited to like be without them or like ship them back. Like, you know what I mean? Like exactly. It's just, so like hey, I love this shoe so much, I keep wearing them over and over and over and over and over again. Now I gotta ship them back to the maker and wait like a month for, for him to make the pair of plastic shoe tree for me, and then ship the whole thing back and take another month and two months without my favorite shoes, right? Right. I mean, is that is I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's basically it. Like, I love like the charm of it, but I guess I can understand why it's not done that often. Now that we like yeah. talked about it, because like I mean. No, no, the shoemaker isn't going to want to like argue with the client to get the shoes back to make. The yeah, shoes. like, and 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 we got to think of it like shoemakers. No matter how good they are, they are skilled tradesmen, right? Yeah, they got a they got a skills that they are good at. They spend years of perfecting it, but then they got to make a living, right? It's yeah, gonna be like it's... make it, get it done, get it finished. Done. No more, you know, craziness going on. No more extra work, anything like that. Yeah, and I said I know we're we're uh, exceeded our time here, but that was, this is uh, shoe. This is shoe um, photography, like everything related that we can kind of like wrap it up on, which I yeah. think is like exactly what. And uh, you, the only make made me think of it because of the, like how you answered that last piece, which was like whether making like a video for youtube or taking like a photo and posting it to instagram or whatever like there's always that um tilting point of like any any more like time invested in creating it like mm -hmm. isn't going to produce like better results so like, like you could how you would could, you quantify the right like at what point is it just like invested. yeah like making like a, a video like at what point are you just like well the video was you know, the video is going to be like 10 minutes long. It took me an hour to shoot it. I've now been yeah. editing it for like five hours. Like, uh, should, is it better to just like stop it 
get the video out there because if I spend another like five hours tweaking every little detail, like is anybody that's going to watch it really going to care? So like, mm-hmm. where's that? Like, and the same thing with like a shoemaker, like, you know, I'm sure like they could dial in every particular detail, but like at a certain point, like that time and energy that's going into it, um, like it, they, they does they lose profits it doesn't re- they don't get that return on the investment that they put in there so like i don't know yeah. you're not a shoemaker but like what i don't know if you can like and maybe just like speak to it i don't even know if it's a question but it just seems like it's something that we all kind of like have to uh have to figure out like how to deal with it yeah like we literally we like we like like man, like many things in life we have to find a happy medium like a balance like we, you know like i if i were a shoemaker i would not want to give anything less than highly satisfied for me to a customer right yeah but then but then highly satisfied for me could be like the most perfect thing ever but it will take like 20 months to complete <laughs> right like so I'm from- hey that's your best friend right there well that's what i was gonna say i mean like he he excels at like um i think it's a combination it's it's a combination of uh you know the amount of work that he has to do and his like painstaking attention to detail and only wanting to do things a certain way that i think caused that that time that time frame but you know i think like there's uh yeah i mean it's just like a balance of everything i mean like if you know, he can't, he doesn't make every shoe himself, but like, I think he's a a great example of yeah, like uh, how it can impact it. Fixed to a standard, right? But then sometimes that kind of fixation is going to sacrifice something else, like, you know, like time. Yeah. And so like this, and not calling this out at all, but I think like this is like things, so like this isn't perfectly straight. Yeah, no, it's not. Which, but you know, but if uh, but like if he didn't take this zoomed in picture of it, you know, like you couldn't you couldn't tell that from here, and no like, one no that, one's going to be able to so tell perfect from 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 further away, you know. Right, and when it's on when it's on his foot, he, I think this is Peter Harrison's shoe. When it's on his foot, like he, there's no way you're going to even be able to come close to seeing it. Nobody so it's just can. like <laughs> right. So so I mean, it's just like uh you know we pick apart you know the finishing or like these little like details and i think it's more so just like not disappointment but it's more so just like you want to you want to uh, um celebrate like the perfection of the work and then like you realize it's not perfect and then you have like a letdown or you're, you're like disappointed about it but like it doesn't really um it doesn't have any impact outside of that yeah it's more so like i want i want to examine this and see like how perfect they like how beautiful they did everything and then you like realize like oh there's a few stitches out of place or maybe it's not as perfect as i wanted to appreciate it for and then it ends up like kind of like hurting how like satisfied you are with the shoe when in reality if you just like accepted it for a shoe and you just kind of conditioned it polished it and wore it like you'd like it a lot more than if you like examine the thing. Absolutely. So, so you are, you and I are, are both from tech, you know, background, right? So yeah. remember the thing that 20% of the work takes 80% of time, right? The last 20% of the work always take 80% of the time, right? Yeah. That's exactly applied to the world of craftsmanship too. Like, in order to get it to a hundred percent satisfaction, you spend like a, a gigantic, enormous amount of time onto it. Yeah. And I think like the other thing is, uh, I mean, it's a little, it's a little different because you can't just like, you can't rush out like different versions of the same shoe. Like you can with like technology where like you get like, you know, like a MVP version of it out there just so that yeah. you can start using it and kind of improve it. But at the same time, I think like, um, there's, it's a, it's a similar, you know, thought process, I guess, or approach where Mm -hmm. you're better off, like 
especially like newer shoemakers, you're better off just jumping in and serving clients, making yeah. shoes, than holding your work back for like years and years and years, waiting for like the perfect shoe to start doing that with. Because exactly by that time, uh, you know, so many things can change, but you know, really like maybe you're end up spending a year trying to perfect a skill that no client really cares about. Yeah. Like a lot. So, so you gotta think of it. Like, even though clients, most of them who are willing to pay for good quality products do appreciate the quality, but what quality, like, like if we looked in, if we look into it and kind of exa examine it, the quality they look for is like, you know, something really like they can see and they can tell, but not everybody is a shoemaker. They can see a nice shape and they'll be like, okay, that's a beautiful last shape. They see a nice uh, pattern. Right. Okay, that's a beautiful shoe, but they don't really like go into all the technical perfection. Like, you know- You can't see the inside. Tends to do. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I think like, uh... I mean, I have no idea. Like, I, supposedly, like these guys were in, uh, they were in the works for like years before they actually like released the act, like you know, the Acme line for people to to purchase. So, I mean, I don't know what those like earlier versions of it looked like, but I mean, I think like their work has improved so much yeah. just in the last like Absolutely right. year and a half that, and I think a lot of it is like based off of feedback that they got from people. Like I know they changed the shoe trees a few times on that. So it's just like, you know, you can perfect something as much as you can in your own eye. But I think some of the most impactful, like enhancements come from like customers or just partners or other people that see the shoes. Cause you know, sometimes having that other perspective is uh super valuable. So cool. I know you got uh, a whole bunch of stuff on, on tap but i uh this was awesome man yep just check you want to talk a little bit about the shoes that i have now what do you got uh i don't know maybe talk about three four pairs that i i have or you know that that what make them different <laughs> well they all your shoes are different i mean i was just saying like we talked about like, i know the, i know i know we talked about the uh i hope wait did it get let me make sure that this thing it didn't get cut off it's still going. It is. Still no, 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 no. I meant like the the end when we were talking because we were talking about the space. Yeah, because I said we were talking about all the oh the one sorry and then I know where my my camera's gonna crap out on me, but the shark skin. Yeah, actually, yeah. I have the shark skin right here. I can pull them up. You want to yeah. talk about them? Tell me or tell me or whoever wants what to listen you? to us um yeah just like what what's the why you were like drawn to that and uh, how you've um like what what's your why you were drawn to it what's kind of like the vision of like i mean you know a natural like shark skin leather is probably like you know very like far thought from like a dress shoe leather but like you have so you know you have a very particular eye so like talk through it all let me find so here it. here's the shoe so anyway so actually um i've always liked so you know me i don't really like exotic skins right i told you that you know leave the exotic animals alone leave the skin alone you know all that but uh Remember Alanette? Well, of course you you know Alanette man. I love right? Started there. I started there. Put the, let me see the shoe again. While you're talking, about it. so um, I think Acme made these as a sample sample back then. Yeah. And I thought of it. I'll be like, the pattern here just works out great, and the color works out great. But. Um, but then I, 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 even though I don't really like exotic skin shoe, shark skin is one of those that I have a special like um, interest for because it's not too crazy. It's not too flashy like, you know, crocodile and alligator to my eye. Yeah. It just has just enough um, 
uh, visual texture, right? It's completely matte. It is grained out, but it's just like pig skin, right? It's, it's, it has enough visual texture to, to create, uh, to draw people in. That's what draw me in for, for this first, the shark skin. Second, I want something that is really natural. Like that's why, you know, you everything's, know, and everything it, it looks here, natural, it looks no not, color. Yeah, I was going to say it looks like not so much better. I'll say so much better, but the, that's not like a slight at the beginning of it. But like as you like wore it, like everything went from like a almost like a crisp, like white dress shirt to like yeah. a, you know, a broken and kind of like, uh rugby style shirt that just like like it looks like it's really natural right yeah it's it just looks really, great it's really like on on you know i like um, it a lot, a lot more than i thought not that yeah, you know like you it, know, it just I, works I, out yeah. so well yeah and you've um, you've like worn those things in like in like a you know feet of snow or whatever like what yeah it, like there's the leather i mean i don't know much about like shark Shark skin, shark skin is still because, leather. Well, right? you gotta think of the animals, right? Uh, well, shark. Are, wait, sharks. Their skin has been in the water before, so. Yeah, so the shark, their skin has been in the water all their life, and then they have been going through <laughs> all kinds of elements, you know, right? Yeah, so yeah. I, they can they can stand the snow just fine. <laughs> That's I, I was just saying. I didn't. I never really like thought through that until I just said it. But yeah, like that's. Let me. Uh, Pure, natural, un unfiltered. <laughs> yeah, no, I was gonna say like that's what because like on I mean photos like they look, you know they look like great, but I'm just like they. Uh, let me. You yeah, know what I mean? Like it, sometimes, down. like looking at it. No, it's right here. There. Like that, just that color looks like. That's a lot different than like the color when you first got them. Yeah. And like, I think they, they look they kind great. Of darken like down that. a little bit. This would look so good with like jeans, I think. Well, I mean, it. Uh, I think you've. It does look good with jeans. I I just, I think I, I, I wore these with jeans before. It's in my profile. <laughs> Scroll down to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, Almost there. But, yeah, I would say like this is just, I like it really, I like this. This is a covered cloth right there, see? The textures just, just looks, work with everything. Yeah. Is it um no, it's like covert, but just like with like shark skin, is it uh I, I think the, the comparison did I pass it? The comparison no, no, to no. the comparison to, to Peccary, I think was really like an apt like comparison because of the reasons that you that you obviously like said. But like, is it, if I was like trying to figure out like, what would I expect if I was, is it like similar to Peccary? Yeah, it's, it's like kind care of similar. Or it's, it's, wear and it's, stuff or? It's not too stiff. It's kind of soft, but it is very hard wearing. And the texture is amazing. Like it's really, yeah, of course it's an appropriate comparison with Peccary. That's what, that's how I would say it. See us, you know, right there is, yeah, I mean it's not um, like it's not denim, but it's like a similar like blue. Down, like, down, text. down. Close this. Down a little bit, a little bit. There we go. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that, that looks so good. Yeah, like the texture just worked with everything, like smooth, uh, fabric, flannel, like this. jeans. This really it, like shows it. Yeah, like the whole thing just it just flow, like what what. At the beginning, if you look at it, if you look at just the shoes, it's going to be like, oh, this is a very hard to pair kind of shoes, right? It's yeah. not easy to wear with everything, but it's actually work with everything. And that, that's what I was going to, um, before my battery dies here, the, uh, I was it this, when you, when I looked at it in that other picture, like this, and I think this is after you already like conditioned them, but yes, yeah. um, those are fresh. This is this is fresh without condition. Like it's like pure white. It almost like looks like. Um, and 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 with this skin, I find that over time, it's like with wear, you literally like burnish, burnish the skin. Like it still has that, you know, soft, rough texture, but like you so burnish good. the skin up. 
Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. Like this, it remind when I saw it with the jeans, it reminded me of like white sneakers. Yeah. I mean, I know it's not like white sneakers, but you know what I mean, like that, like no, the versa- like, versatility, right? Yeah, yeah talking about versatility. Yeah, absolutely right. Like that's the I mean, whole point different, of having these. Different than this, but like similar to like, it doesn't look like you're wearing a dress shoe with not at all, like with denim. Yep, exactly. See, it looks it super- just works. It's almost like like with like a gum sole, like it's just a really cool look. Yeah. Damn. It's just now, really cool you, from now I, I don't know if you did it or if I did it, but I may have just been like talked into <laughs> a shark skin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and also it, it is a year round shoe. It is literally a year round shoe. I know. This is, you know, this photo is during summer, which works. And you see me wearing these on the snow which also works so it's a year-round shoe <laughs> damn but i'm i'm on like my last percent here so we're we'll have to we're gonna do we should maybe like start doing this like a little more often and we'll yeah keep it to like 15 20 minutes maybe like every other week and kill a topic at a time hey guys thanks for sticking around and watching all of the video i know it was a long conversation but i really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed having it